Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV here for you, still in Vancouver. We are now this morning at the offices of uh, Endeavor Silver, you remember, seventh largest silver producer in the world here. And with me is Bradford Cook, the founder and CEO of the company. Bradford, good morning. Good morning, Jochen. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you very much for taking the time. And I would say 2019, yeah, a lot of uh, things were going on, of course, in your company. Um, before we dive into El Cubo, I would uh, love to have a comment on your production numbers, which uh, just came out. Yes, and Indeed. Well, as you know, 2019 was probably our most challenging year mm -hmm. ever, and we had to make some sweeping changes to improve the production. Uh, we did release our production update here a week ago, mm -hmm. and uh, we did produce about 7.1 million ounces of silver and equivalents. That was approximately 4 million ounces of silver and just under 40,000 ounces of gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. You were, you were satisfied with that so far? No. With the production last year, no, far from yeah. it. But in the same news release, we did announce that we are now planning to produce more metal from each mine at lower costs in mm -hmm. 2020. So mm -hmm. the, the trend is now up, and uh, we think that this should be a much better year. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Good. Can you already comment a bit on the cost side from 2019? I know the numbers are not yet out, but uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea. Well, for us, of course, what's more important <laughs> is not that how badly we did last year. Mm -hmm. I think everybody saw yeah. that. What's important is that we did a changes to, to change the trend from rising costs to falling costs. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm uh, very comfortable in saying that those costs are coming down uh, every month. Okay, super. So one big factor was, of course, also uh, a Kubo. Yeah. So um, maybe you can uh, give us a bit of an explanation about what, what we should point out. Maybe this, this mine is not like closed completely, it's suspended. So maybe you can give us uh, the difference on that and maybe are, is there future opt optionality? So that has obviously been a big disappointment for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the Having to suspend the operations at El Cubo was not something we were wanting to do. We had uh, a year prior uh, published uh, in our news releases the possibility that Kubo would run out of ore. And in fact, uh, when I got back from Europe last November, we finally received our updated reserve report and there were none. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough decision. We knew it was possible, uh, but as soon as we received the reserve report, we had to, to go to mm -hmm. suspension of operations. Mm -hmm. In that news release, we also talked about uh, considering our alternatives. So let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, suspension of operations does not necessarily mean closure. Uh, we have, for instance, identified uh, resources, gold and silver resources, uh, within trucking distance of El Cubo mm -hmm. that don't have a home. Mm -hmm. And so one alternative is if we can acquire some resources, and mm -hmm. then we would be looking at a possible restart. Mm -hmm. A second alternative is that if the, the owners of those resources prefer not to sell, then maybe we're looking at a joint venture or perhaps even a toll milling arrangement. So there are some choices. Mm -hmm. um, I think I mentioned uh, in November that the last chapter on the El Cubo story has not been written yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are seriously considering how to bring the company or bring the, uh, the mine back. Mm -hmm, fantastic. So that, that would mean by now, let's say uh, you are suffering a bit, but there might be in the future uh, again a turnaround story. Yes. But our future is not really Kubo. That would be yeah. a bonus at this point. Yeah. But it's uh, our Terranera, future, definitely, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Terranera and Paral. And mm -hmm. before we go to the development projects, let mm -hmm. me just say that the, the, uh, the biggest thing that we did at Guanasvi was acquire adjacent lands and, and mm -hmm. start developing extensions of historic ore bodies that are mm -hmm. shallower, higher grade, and thicker than what mm -hmm. we were currently mm -hmm. mining. So that Guanasvi is actually going to be our leading mine this year. More than half our production mm -hmm. will come from Guanasvi. And if you recall, one year ago, it was our worst mine. Yeah. So we feel that uh, turnaround has been accomplished. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have struggled with Bolonitos in recent months. The same thing can be applied to Bolonitos. Mm -hmm. We're actively working to acquire adjacent lands so that we can get back into shallow, high-grade ore bodies. Mm -hmm. Great, fantastic. So then let's come to Terronera because you are in the way of the project finance, whatever you want to call that. Yeah, I mean, you have, uh, I think, all permits. Uh, the the pre-work is done. Now you need the money, right? <clears throat> Correct. Yeah. So that's the main barrier now between us and breaking ground. Mm -hmm. I had hoped, obviously, to raise the debt financing last year. It did not happen. 
Uh, the state of the debt markets changed in November, December. Uh, but we had previous offers and we're mm -hmm. going back to the previous offers to see if we can put together a debt consortium mm -hmm. here this year. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So that would mean, uh, let's assume the next three, four months is you can do that, then you can go full throttle for construction. As soon, and as, soon as the debt is in place yeah. and we can break ground. Okay, so what is the uh, amount of debt approximately we are talking? Well, the CapEx has been in the 120, 130 range and we've targeted 80 million as debt. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the rest you can do also via cash flow and cash, cash flow, different. and yeah. if needed, we can go to the equity markets. Yeah. But rather than doing it first mm -hmm. when the stock is down, yeah. we, let's wait. Absolutely, yes, silver should rise immediately. <laughs> <laughs> we hope for at least. <laughs> Fantastic. So, what's going on with uh, Paral? Mm. Paral, we have um, uh, it was our biggest exploration mm. project last year. Yeah, we have a nice, great results. We have right? a nice bump in resources. Yeah. The resource statement is, should be out in a week, and uh, okay. Uh, we are now moving to economic studies. The mm -hmm. first economic study will be prepared in the first quarter, mm -hmm. and we're already in permitting. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to actually have some permits uh, secured in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. And we're now uh, very carefully evaluating, uh, first of all, a 2,000 ton bulk sample to mm -hmm. be processed at a local mill, and then to see if we can negotiate at least one year availability mm -hmm. uh, to continue mining mm -hmm. uh, Paral into that local mill. Uh, that mm -hmm. would be like a toll milling uh, nice. uh, proposition, but yeah. generating cash flow. That's important yeah, because cash flow is always key. Yes. <laughs> Super. Um, 2020, what are the developments uh, on your, let's call it, future exploration and mm -hmm. future projects for the company, like in Chile? So once again, uh, Peral will be a big uh, project mm -hmm. this year. Each of the mines will receive exploration. Uh, but what's really new and exciting is that we finally started drilling in October the three mm -hmm. projects we hold in Chile. Mm -hmm. And this is really the long-term future of the company. We acquired those projects and did all of the surface work over several years to groom mm -hmm. what we consider to be world-class targets. Mm -hmm. We started drilling on uh, the, our, our copper project in October. Uh, we started in December drilling our gold target, Paloma. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometime late this year, we'll start on the silver target, mm -hmm. AIDA. So re initial results should be out in the first quarter from the copper and the gold. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. So I would say a uh, heavy 2020, meaning positively and a lot of workload. And I uh, keep fingers crossed that you really get the money for Terronera because that will yeah, almost double the production from today, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And I've been very busy this month. Yeah. I'm traveling each week this month of January, mm -hmm. primarily for M&A, mm -hmm. primarily in Mexico. Mm -hmm. so. Super. Then all the best, Bradford. Thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, I think we see us later at PDSE. Absolutely. Yeah, super. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Bradford Cook, the founder and CEO of Endeavor Silver. And uh, yeah, you heard it, lots of workload. Despite uh, 2019 was really shaky for the company, but they managed to come over that. And uh, also, yeah, like Juana Sevi uh, was a mine who was in trouble. They turned it around now and uh, things are working really well here. And uh, of course, they need to find now the debt financing for Terronera, but I'm pretty sure in the next, uh, whatever, four to eight weeks, maybe uh, three months is let's call it in the first quarter, maybe beginning of the second quarter, they should have it. And uh, then they can go on full throttle because everything is done, the foundation is, lay, is laid, and uh, that would double then uh, from next year onwards the production of the company. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. Check out the company. Bye-bye from Vancouver.